Then the terrible day came. We were given notice that we had just three days to lock up our apartment, pack our things, essentials only, and not weighing more than 60 kilos, and all in one suitcase, and to report to the town square for relocation. We were to lock our apartment and give a German official the key. My mother made me carry the suitcase. It was so heavy. I wanted to throw it away. I didn't care for those things. I was ready to lose everything. Everything but life. We were three days traveling that short distance from Prague to the big fortress Theresien. The Germans called it Theresienstadt, the nice camp. Only 32,000 people had died there. All the older people were very sad and angry. Often I would hear them say, this is the end of us, the end. My mother said to me, be as quiet as a mouse. If you are as quiet as a mouse, you will survive. This was the ghetto mentality, a way to survive. I did not want to be a mouse. I wanted to be more than a mouse. A rat. That is what I would be. A great big rat. Theresienstadt was an old fortress only 62 kilometers north of Prague. Not that far, really. It had once been a garrison town, and they had made it into a ghetto. The Germans said it was a model ghetto, a wonderful place that Adolf Hitler had given to the Jews. It was not a lie to a German to tell a Jew whatever they thought would make the Jew do what they wanted him to do. This was not a lie to them. This was how you must deal with Jews. The Nazis were not moralizing. What was good for Germany was good. The rest was bad. What they now said was that they were bringing Jews from all over Europe to ghettos like Theresienstadt to relocate them and normalize them. Ghettos were places where Jews could work and be happy. There would be no more nomadic, wandering Jews. My sister Hannah was 16 when we arrived in Theresienstadt. They made her work. She was to push a cart around the streets and pick up the rubbish. Hannah was a beautiful girl. Our people's soul is the basic question with which national socialism is concerned. Fidelity, honor, love, comradeship, heroism, folkdom, homeland. The Nazis believed that the Jewish spirit was wholly different from that of the Nordic race. Above everything else, the Jewish spirit is focused on its own ego, its own conceptions, and its own interests. What we must fight for is to safeguard the existence and reproduction of our race and our people. The sustenance of our children and the purity of our blood. The freedom and independence of the fatherland so that our people may mature for the fulfillment of the mission allotted it by the creator of the universe. The point is not who will win and who will lose when a man is pitted against a lion. The point is whether the man will lose with dignity in the lion's jaws and claws or lose like some poor wretch.
In the ghetto, I saw a sort of morality, a morality I did not know about before. If you found something, then you were lucky and you were happy because of your luck. But then there was the person who had lost what you had found. For them it was sadness. Later it became worse. If you survived, you knew that for everybody who lived, somebody else had to die. The Nazi death machine must every day have its portion of the dead. But you do not feel guilty. You did not kill anyone. The Germans were the ones who killed the others. Man hat ihr im Prager Messepalais wohl nicht beigebracht, dass du einen deutschen Offizier zu grüßen hast, was? Nun, Freundchen, ich werde schon Sorge dafür tragen, dass man dir hier den Rost aus dem Gehirn putzt. Auf zum Boden! 853, I knew a man who spoke about how we are all perfecting the only art that no one wants to talk about. The art of dying. Even as we each try and steal a bit of time from death. We lived as best as we could in the ghetto. So many artists, musicians, scientists were jammed in here in just a few city blocks. We had a theater group and a music group and a writer's group and many other gatherings. These were people you would not normally meet. There was not much to eat. One day, I caught a cat and roasted it. It tasted good and even better when I reminded myself that it had belonged to an SS officer. In camp, I learned to survive and do what I needed to do. I learned to size up people. I would not let them come close to me unless they passed an invisible test. I learned to have respect for people who were morally good people. If my enemy went to the gas chamber, I did not care. In Theresienstadt, an older boy, Van der Velde, had taken a book I had. It was my primer on sex and uh, my friend who played soccer with me had given to me. In Auschwitz, Van der Velde went to the gas chamber with his wife and child. It was only a long time later that I could pity him and pity myself. We were thousands, no, hundreds of thousands, crammed into such a small area. We had lost everything. But still, we thought things could get worse. Human beings are funny like that. You can be looking down the gun barrel and see the bullet coming towards you and still you think it could not happen to you. You see the bullet tearing towards you and still you do not believe you can die. People do not believe that someone will kill them. If they knew, really knew, they would have torn the SS men and their dogs apart there were thousands of us. We would have torn them apart with our bare hands. We could not believe that they would kill us. If we could not kill them, how could they kill us? <laughs> 